Jay Gurudev. Today we will be reading Secrets of Healthy Life. Good health and ability for proper understanding, both these are the best blessings in life. Good health is closely related to proper understanding. It is said that a stable mind resides in a healthy body. The mind, thoughts, and understanding of a person having indifferent health will never be mature. One can judge a man from a status of his health. People with good moral conduct are healthy, strong, and free from diseases. They always have a smiling face. These people have some sort of magnetism so that everyone wishes to talk to them, make friends with them, and always be with them. Nobody likes to separate from them. Healthy people have greater vitality in them. The reason for the current diseases, sorrow, frailty, dissatisfaction, strife, and lack of peace in our lives is because of lack of proper understanding. This lack of understanding makes us roam in the mire of greed and delusions and does not allow us to come on the path of heavenly peace, natural satisfaction, and endless virtues. Test your ambitions on the touchstone of truth and propriety, weigh on the balance of benefit or lack of it, and immediately throw away those desires which are obstructing the path. Then you will observe how happiness, peace, and good health enter your life. Moral discretion is man's biggest guru, director, assistant, and harbinger of luck. In ancient times, every citizen of India was a follower of Indian civilization and worshipper of moral discretion. Morality in the form of Gayatri Mahamantra, Great Psalm, was worshipped. The characteristic of strength of the soul in those days was to accept and adopt only that which is proper, derived by logic and acceptable to the intelligence, and to throw away the useless garbage of traditional muddling thoughts from the mind. Discreet people have always been discarding, according to the needs of the times, unnecessary customs, habits, traditions, and beliefs, even though these may have been introduced or adopted by so-called great persons. If this mode of thinking is destroyed, then one should realize that all else, even good health, is destroyed. The truth of the matter is that at present we are living in a terrible era of illusion of intelligence. Instead of thinking along the straight and truthful line, we have become habituated to think in the opposite direction. As a result, we are roaming dazedly in the labyrinthine maze of our own perversities. It is a quirk of destiny that on one hand the strength of our intelligence is used in making money and plotting strategies for satisfying our curiosity and creating miracles while on the other hand, the same intelligent discards ideals and gets entangled in such problems that one is compelled to brand as foolish. The path to happiness, good health, and long life is straight and simple and free from the so-called cleverness. Our own foolishness is the mother of all our troubles. Wrong belief, very low type of thinking, and taste and willful choice of wrong direction in the name of sophistication, these mistakes have ensnared intelligent people in their collective net and fooled them. If we wish to continue to rot in this situation, then we must also realize that our individual and collective health will be destroyed in the days to come. We must free ourselves from the illusion that costly foodstuff can make a person strong and that freedom from disease can be achieved with medicines. The type of world that we live in today can only be te termed a world of mad persons. When people throw morality, vision, propriety, and permanent benefits to the winds and are immersed in making money by deceit, they should be considered profligates only. It appears as if a man's intelligence is centered on preparing various rich dishes for destroying digestion. This distorted intelligence manifests vividly in get-togethers and picnics. Pictures, songs, musical instruments, makeup, appearance, and acting in films all are aimed at exciting lust and creating the ammunition for destroying man's health and life. 
Artificialness has crept in man's lifestyle and food habits to such an extent that apparently man has decided to boycott the dictates of nature. The whole society is bent on behaving like mad persons. This is akin to slow suicide. In this situation, superficial efforts cannot contain the danger to society's health. For this, we will have to bring a revolutionary change in thinking pattern and behavior. Unfortunately, the daring and will required to change the wrong beliefs, thoughts, and habits is very much lacking these days. Actually, we must firmly hold on to what we believe is right and immediately discard all the wrong that is going on. Each man must have at least this much courage. Those who do not dare to accept the useful and cannot give up the useless must be called half-dead if not dead. They are not able to understand any discussion on knowledge and discretion. When they hear such a sermon, there is a temporary surge of ambition coupled with a desire to follow the good path for their own benefit, but the moment the talk is over, the desire dies down. If a person is not ready to change his beliefs and habits, then he cannot hope to obtain freedom from the problem of indifferent health or diseases. Jungle tribes like the Beals in India and Eskimos living in the unbearable cold of the North Pole are found to be healthy, well-built, cheerful, and having a long lifespan despite living in economic hardship and being deprived of costly foods, clothes, and medical facilities. They have adopted a simple lifestyle with the intelligence bestowed by nature. Compared to them, we are very much different and despite being surrounded by comforts and facilities, we are making our bodies unnecessarily weak. The issue of good health for us cannot be tackled by nutritious food, rest, medicines, etc. If that were so, then we would find all wealthy and rich people well built like wrestlers and the poor laborers and people not have enough of their daily necessities with poor built and suffering from illness. But actually what happens is the opposite. We should give up our short-sighted attitude and adopt a rational approach of thinking over a long-term future. There is no reason why we should not hope for a long life by adopting simplicity in food and lifestyle. If we understand the importance of good health and we are also aware of the consequences of a weak body illness. Most people cannot give up in discipline in life. The tongue ever greedy for newer taste is not ready for simple food. The other bodily senses also want a free reign and on the other front of nature also does not deviate from its rule of punishing the undisciplined personal will illness. Man groans from the sufferings of many diseases and dies. It is possible to bring a change in the individual with self-discipline and my mankind can easily free itself from the widespread catastrophe of ill health. An ill person is a burden on this earth. While groaning and suffering from illness, he is wasting time of others who have to look after him and nurse him. He becomes unhappy and makes others unhappy. His earning is temporarily suspended and there is greater dent in his financial situation with extra expenses for medicine and other requirements. His helplessness may also create dirt around him and revulsion in others. An ill body houses an ill mind and the patient becomes irritable, finds fault at the drop of a pin and makes other around him sad. His nature becomes perverse and he becomes a curse for himself, his family, and for the society. To save oneself from illness, all that is required is timely precaution. That added prevention is better than cure holds true at all times. One must develop the habit of a cheerful smile on one's face. It is a good habit. Such a smile can be considered a serene and invaluable beauty. Not all the items of a toilet can give the type of glow which a smile bestows on one's face. This is a free remedy of enhancing one's personality. One should stand in front of a mirror and try to find which expressions look more pleasant and attractive. People disapprove of a sad face 
and still more expressions of anger, excitement, despair, and anxiety. Everyone tries to keep away from such people. Maintaining silence is considered a symbol of lack of interest, lack of activeness, and a timid nature. The circle of friends also starts diminishing gradually. It is very inappropriate to think that man becomes happy and flourishes with an abundance of wealth and luxuries and therefore one must leave all else and go on accumulating wealth. Bodily strength and beauty of the face have their own importance. Money is also necessary because it helps to obtain the necessities of life. Even then, it should not be forgotten that the nature and level of one's personality are inseparably linked with the mind. Ignoring this truth results in great loss. Howsoever great the importance of health, education, talent, and position in life, their benefit is limited only to the collection of comforts and facilities, but there is something beyond that. If that were not so, then only the prosperous would be the masters of all they surveyed, and then nobody would care for the great people. One should understand the importance of the mind and must constantly strive not only for controlling its waywardness, but also use it for deep thinking and thereby purifying it. There is great truth in the saying that one who controls himself can also rule others. Mind and soul have been described in many and varied ways. In short, it can be described as one's level of thinking. Beliefs, feelings, and faith are all within its ambit. Imagination, description, and guesswork all work within its sphere. Habits, one's nature, and respect for others, they all develop here. Although it appears that thoughts spring by themselves and impose themselves on us, actually it is not so. This is because first we decide on a particular line of thinking and then the thoughts start flowing accordingly. Now the latest in-depth scientific researchers have proved conclusively that body is deeply influenced and controlled by mind. When the mind becomes disturbed, Diseases called psychosomatic, psych equal mind, soma equal body occur and simultaneously disturbed mental conditions also take place. The mind is the lord of the body. One whose mind is full of woe or excitement will certainly influence the functions of the body and will not allow it to be at peace. If someone receives the news of the death of a near and dear one, his hunger, thirst, sleep, they all disappear. When a person is in the grip of uncontrollable anger, he is not himself, as if he is a separate, different person and behaves like a mad person. A fearfully afraid person also becomes meek and weak. He feels as if he cannot escape easily. He finds it very difficult to fight against the calamity. All this is the effect of a disturbed mind on one's body. If we want to change our situation, the prime solution is to change our way of thinking. First of all, we must fight against those habits which are responsible for shackling us in situation of despair. Just as there is no cure for paralysis, bottle handicaps, and debility, so is the case of a man as long as he is in the grip of wrong attitudes and thoughts. Lazy people and people who avoid work come under this category. They are incapable even though they have the capacity. A man capable of plenty achievements wastes away his time like an incapable person because of the mind rigidity resulting in avoidance of work, living on others' expenses, and lazing away. Despite having all the time in their hands, they just waste it. If a man utilizes the same time constructively, he has the potential to become capable, skillful, and prosperous. Laziness tends to bind a man's mind. A lazy man does not bother even to think. He coolly accepts whatever is going on. The habit of living a fantasy world of imaginary progress because of incapacity to think and act makes such a person a laughing stock, like the legendary Sakechili in children's stories. 
Lazy people do not bother to think about progressing. Their only solace is to accuse others for their ill luck, even though they themselves are the cause. Laziness is a bad habit which makes the body lazy and affects the mind. The lazy mind starts roaming in the wrong direction, justifying the saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. The idle person then starts indulging in such time-wasting pastimes as card games, ludo, and chess. He starts looking out for similar company or even entices the gullible ones. Understanding, patience, balanced mind, daring, and efforts are required to change one's present situation. When a person does not get involved in the above processes, immortality takes root. However, if disorganized thoughts are marshaled to find solutions for a bad situation, the road to progress will definitely manifest. Normally, it is considered that one is healthy if one is saved from weakness and illness. A well-built, proportionate, capable body is considered a gift of health. Mind and brain are also within this body. Our thought process, ability to discriminate, and intelligence are also links to the entire health. Beliefs, feelings, and habits are the distinctive properties of this sphere. These two must be free from undesirable elements so that one's discretion for looking into the future remains firm. Understanding Honesty, responsibility, and bravery of person reveal his mental stability. Greed, attachment, and ego must be considered as harmful as ill health. Unfortunately, people keep ignoring this serious matter. The root cause of diseases is unnatural diet and undisciplined mind. Their mixtures bring diseases and troubles. These troubles cannot be eradicated unless and until the root cause is alive. The fundamental solution is to change the pattern and proportion of diet to very simple food. Excess of sweets and fats in the diet cause harm and also non-vegetarian food. Non-vegetarian food cannot keep a person healthy because in reality it is against a man's natural constitution. New research on brain and mind has changed the entire thinking about health and conclusively shown that a perturbed, worried, excited, and feeble mind casts its influence on the organs of the body. Careful attention must be paid to our daily diet and fruits and vegetables must be increased in it. It is sufficient to cook the vegetables by boiling rather than frying. One must give up undesirable foods and eat less than the demands of hunger. The current trend of seasoning the food with spices and eating rich food is like buying illness at a high price. Similarly, it is necessary to maintain mental stability by restoring to moral living. Do not allow lust to take possession of your better self. Do not allow ambitions to run riot so that mental balance is lost in merely planning your project. The greed for wealth is such that even gods have not been able to fulfill this greed. The easiest way to save oneself from disease is to lead a life close to nature and to keep one's mind free from disturbances. A good and healthy attitude is not to give too much importance to illness. Nature is always working for the removal of diseases. She does not accept defeat as long as the patient cooperates even to a small extent. The patient's cooperation should be in the form of patience and keeping a strong mental attitude. Pain and problems are always connected with an individual. It is not enough to fight against it. He must also learn to bear with the illness with patience. He should also learn to lighten his suffering by diverting his mind towards some entertainment. It is also the duty of family members and relatives to reassure the patient that he is being given proper treatment and will definitely be cured. Disease is a result of our choosing the wrong path. It can be considered a punishment for going along the wrong path. By behaving in a willful manner and going against the tenets of nature, we have to bear the fruits of our sins in the form of various diseases. 
undisciplined and willful behavior against the rules of nature has resulted in the roaring tornado of various illnesses gripping mankind today. Ignoring the signals from one's body and audaciously tinkering with it is resulting in increasing illness in the society. Smoking, drinking, very hot tea and coffee, alcohol, aspirin, and increased and indiscriminate use of steroids is also resulting in illness. Illness does not come without reason. They are invited by the ignorant and the undisciplined and reside in them as long as accommodation is available. Entertainment is necessary for giving rest and relief to the mind. When taking rest after work, it is necessary to relax the body. Likewise, during entertainment, the mind relaxes because it is freed from tension. One can relax even without entertainment, but that requires efforts. This is possible only for people continuously practicing high-level yogic mental attainments. For the common man, relief for the tired mind is possible only by entertainment because it diverts the mind's attention to a lighter plane. Just as rest is necessary for the body, similarly, entertainment is necessary for the total development of the individual. Like education, health, social interactions, and proper atmosphere, entertainment too must be pure and wholesome because it cheers up the mind, creates new interest in living, and recharges the mind with energy. Every activity should be mixed with proper positive feelings. Meals should be eaten as an offering from God. Instead of tasting unwanted food and leaving it as it is on the plate, it should be removed to another clean plate so that others can use it. If the food is not to our taste, we should not express displeasure or anger. A meal taken in an atmosphere of displeasure becomes harmful, whereas even a meager meal taken cheerfully makes it nourishing and healthy. One quarter of all illnesses in this world are because of improper digestion. It is the duty of every thinking individual to make his body healthy and capable for long life. Everyone wants all this, but their lifestyle and food habits are exactly in the opposite direction. This causes incalculable harm to one's own body, destruction of health, pain, and death. It is not at all difficult to remain healthy and capable. This is achievable by living in tune with nature. What is proper and improper is indicated by machine and in the form of body organs. Their deranged function alerts us for taking proper measures. Proper health is achieved by disciplining living within the limits set up by nature. It is an absolute wrong belief that eating more food gives more strength. Only proper digestion of food will result in strength. Actually, overeating burdens the digestive system and causes harm instead of giving strength. One should eat only after the earlier meal has been digested. The stomach is empty and one feels really hungry. If that does not happen, one should be satisfied with one meal only and avoid a second meal. If one wants to mend a weak digestive system to bring it to normal, the time between two meals must be prolonged. Instead of taking medicines for digestion, it is better to fast or eat once a day until returning to normal. This prevents the waste of food as well as digestive juices. As long as people are engaged in service, business, or some gainful activity, their health remains good, but no sooner they retire, the rosy imaginations of a peaceful and happy life disappear. It is extremely important to understand that if one takes interest in any work, it does not remain mere work, but a fun-giving activity. There is a custom in many parts of India that people press you to eat more food to express their love for you. In such a situation, one must politely and firmly say no to such instance. Many people overeat because of their greed for tasty food and then suffer also. One does not become weak because of reducing the food intake. With overeating, one becomes the victim of indigestion and the digestive system becomes weaker and weaker with continued overeating. Compared to the number of people dying from hunger, 
Double the number die from overeating. Man is attacked by external microorganism and also affected by changes in the weather resulting in lower body resistance. But the most prominent cause is overindulgence in food. People working only with their brains and running away from physical work usually do not have proper health. Actually, every limb and organ of the body must get due exercise to maintain its normal activity and firmness. Those who do not have the practice of hard physical work or do not get such an opportunity pay a heavy price for laziness and weaken the body's constitution. One must always take deep breaths for maintaining the dynamic activity of the lungs and help the body to get its proper supply of oxygen. A large part of the lungs of people sitting with a stoop remains inactive. This leads to diseases such as asthma, tuberculosis, cough, and also to an increase of bacteria in the lungs. One should always breathe through the nose and move one hands forward and backward like a soldier while walking. If one adopts a simple lifestyle, then there will be no cause at all to suffer the punishment for going against the norms of nature. Ten golden rules given below are useful for everyone for a healthy life. Number one, physical celibacy must be observed to the maximum possible extent. Only when there is an unavoidable need for begetting a child should one think of sex. Husband and wife should regard each other with purity as two friends or partners. Number two, save yourself from mental lust. Just as one feels innocent joy on seeing a beautiful flower, so should one feel when seeing a man or woman full of beauty. Number three, go to bed and rise early. Number four, one must pay sufficient attention to cleanliness of the body, clothes, residence, and furniture, etc. Number five, one should not shy away from physical work. Plan a regimen of daily exercise which will tire you heavily. Number six, avoid or discard negative feelings like anger, anxiety, despair, jealousy, malice. Everyone should cultivate the habit of living with a cheerful smile. Number seven, do not cover yourself excessively with clothes. The body should be trained to bear heat and cold. Number eight, save yourself from the addictions of any and every type. Just as you will be afraid of a poisonous snake, Similarly, be afraid of bad company, dirty books, and dirty entertainment. Number nine, avoid or discard artificialness, makeup, falsehood, and childish pursuit of fashions. Just like gentlemen, keep a simple attire. Lead a satisfied life and do not burn in the fire of ambitions. Number ten, do not imitate others. Let their way of thinking, habits, and behavior be with them. Use your mental and physical efforts with discretion and develop the courage to walk alone firmly along your chosen path. It is not necessary to take adventurous steps or perform penance or spiritual exercises to remove illnesses. You have to do only this much. Firmly dust out from your mind the cobwebs of wrong beliefs about food and modern lifestyle. These are like evil witches cackling over their brew, and as long as they remain, your problems of ill health will not disappear. Some golden axioms regarding diet should not only be remembered but also faithfully acted upon. Number one, we must not live to eat, but eat to live, or life is not for the purpose of eating, but food is necessary for maintaining life. Number two, do not indulge in undesirable food for taste but take only the proper food for its nutritive value and just as a doctor chooses the proper medicine for treating a particular illness. Number three, do not eat anything without feeling hungry. Number four, when eating your meal, then fill only half the stomach. Fill one-fourth part with water and leave one-fourth empty. If you feel more hungry, fill only three-fourths of the stomach with food, but never more. Number five, totally avoid spices, sweet, pungent, and seasoned foods. Number six, take only that food which agrees with your digestion. Number seven, take more vegetables in the diet. Number eight, avoid more than two meals a day. Number nine, 
The morning breakfast consists only of light liquids like milk or buttermilk. Number 10. The food must be chewed thoroughly and eaten in a cheerful frame of mind. The food must have been from one honest earning. If these 10 golden maxims are linked to our daily diet, the digestive system will not be as set. Whatever food that is eaten will be very properly digested and absorbed. With only this small arrangement, one can cut away at the roots of diseases. Jai Gurudev.